Hi there, welcome to Silly Fokker RC. I'm Alan, the latest member of the team. Um, we're going to go through a build video today of the uh, what I thought was the DJI 450. Rather embarrassingly, I bought the clone from Hobby King. But hey, it gives you guys a good opportunity to see any pitfalls with the clone. Um, not really experienced at all when it comes to the uh, world of multi-rotor. Uh, multi I've been out of the hobby for a couple of years, uh, fly helicopters and airplanes, so this is all very new. I've uh, took some advice from some of the other members on some of the kit we've got here. I'll just run for it quickly, as I've covered, the fake version of the uh, DJI, or uh, Hobby King's version, should I say. We've also got some Turnergy props. Um, these are very crash resistant from what I've seen. These are gonna be used just to test the, um, the aircraft and get it up and running. Um, and then I've also purchased some uh, Grout and the Reed props. They're gonna be used once the uh, setup's ha all up and running. I'm happy with it. Um, they were purchased locally from uh, motors and rotors in Kings Langley. Everything else you see on the table was purchased from Hobby King, uh, from the UK warehouse or from uh, the global warehouse. We've got some fairly cheap, sort of $10, $11 Turnergy motors. Got five of them, figured at that price point may need a spare. Hopefully uh, that won't be the case. We've got four Turnergy plush speed controllers, 25 amp. Uh, I've got a watts meter. We're going to do some work later on to see if uh, I've purchased the right thing there or not, but I think we'll be okay. Um, and then 1800 milliamp four cell pack. Of course, the heart of the quadcopter, the KK2. Don't actually know what version this has come shipped with yet, but um, some of my colleagues have got the uh, ability to flash that with the uh, flash lead. We can show you that later. Uh, some 14 gauge wire, some of the highly recommended um, double sided pads for mounting the KK board. Um, XT60 charge leads, um, I've got two chargers, so two charge leads, and a couple of servos. Originally I was going to build myself a tricopter, decided to go for the quad, um, eventually it's going to have a GoPro on it, and actually after seeing some of the videos on YouTube, there's the ability to put tilt rotors on the back of these, and that's going to be the idea for that. But this is going to be a build for the standard frame, and um, once we've got that done and documented and shown you all the pitfalls, then we'll look at upgrading it and uh, tweaking it. So the first step in this build will be tinning the integrated PCB so that it is ready for the ESC power leads and your choice of battery connector. A good soldering iron is essential for this build. I used the Solder Pro 70, but any iron capable of 70 watts will be fine. So now that you've attached your ESC power leads and battery power leads, you can protect your bare joints with some hot glue. This will prevent a short out if anything conductive gets in there. I must add at this point that we forgot to attach the two thin wires that supply the KK board with its power monitoring feature. Fortunately for us, Don, or DHDS Racer, as he's known on YouTube, has a fantastic video on how to attach the leads to the KK board and to your power system. The link for this will be in the description box. Please pause this video if you're at this stage and go and watch the video. Don't forget to pop back and watch the rest of your build video with us. All that should be left for you to do now is solder your 3.5 bullet connectors onto the ESCs and apply some heat shrink. After this is done, you can put the top and bottom boards onto the arms, completing the frame. If you're going to be using the cross plate like we are to attach the motors, add a little bit of thread locker to hold those screws nice and tight. This should save you an accident later on. Okay guys, hang in there, we're almost there. Just pop a felt pad underneath your motor, pop the zip ties in, tighten her up. Your motor's now installed. Hi guys, as you can see, we've moved on a little bit. It's been a couple of hours now. Um, just wanted to run you through what we've done, just in case we've missed any photos along the way. Um, after we put the bottom plate onto the arms, We've obviously just flipped that over, attached the top plate, a few more screws, starts looking like a tricopter. No real issues so far, impressed with the kit, it is a copy as we've said, or uh, 
Hobby King's version of the quadcopter and uh, actually very impressed. For the price point, you can't argue. I think delivered it was $18, something like that. Um, we did find that the screws for the motors weren't long enough to reach the motors through this kit. We looked at drilling it out, decided not to. What we did is we Loctited the supplied four-way cross arms to the motors and then just a couple of zip ties either side. They do seem nice and secure and we've got some um, previous with tricopters and the zip ties just do seem to do a good job. They just pop off. Um, so hopefully that will save us an incident or two uh, and maybe even a motor shaft. So the speed controllers are on. They're just zip tied fairly loosely and um, that might need a, a little bit of tidying up later, but we're happy with where we are. Um, the next thing is to mount the KK board. We've already flashed this one with version 1.6. Um, so before we carry on with the build, uh, Mount's going to cut in now and take you through how to flash the KK board with the software. And then we'll get back to finishing off the quadcopter. See you soon. Okay, guys, just one thing before we get started. When you mount your KK board, put your quadcopter so that the rear of it is facing you and mount the cable, KK board on the quadcopter or, or tricopter or whatever it is that you're building with the buttons facing you in your orientation that it is in in this image. That will make sure that the tricopter or quadcopter or octocopter or whatever it is you're building is in the correct orientation with respect to the KK board. So let's just take a little walk around the KK board and familiarise ourselves with it. In the top right hand corner we have the PESO output, that is where the beeper that is now supplied with the KK board comes from. M1, M2, M3 and so on are just motor numbers, so M1 is motor 1, M2 is motor 2 and so on. Then we come to the bottom of the board, back, up, down and enter, very very simple. This is how you navigate through the board and to enter different values. Now the bit that we're going to be looking at next, the in-system programming or ISP header. The uh, lead that you get to flash the KK boards can either be bought on eBay or from Hobby King when it's in stock. Uh, the one that I have here, the ribbon goes towards the board instead of away from it when you're plugging it in but you can plug it in the wrong way it's fine you won't actually damage it all it will do is it won't work um so yeah the the rest of it is very very um self-explanatory as you can see this is where you plug in your aileron elevator throttle rudder and auxiliary on the quadcopter and the tricopter that we've built so far we use the gear channel on the auxiliary plug-in where it says auxiliary on the board, we plugged in our gear channel and that is to enable the auto level feature. Okay guys, so I'm not going to make work for myself here. Don DHDS Racer has a fantastic tutorial showing you how to flash the KK2. Don's also got some fantastic videos on tuning. So I'm going to include both those links below this video. Please, when you go over there, give Don a thumbs up on the videos that you've watched and subscribe to him. If you're interested in this kind of thing, Don is one of the best guys on YouTube to show you around the KK board and quadcopters. Hi guys, as you can see, she's all done. Um, we're into about hour three of the build, which I think is pretty good, um, considering I haven't done this before. have had some help with the KK2 board from Malk. He's going to put plenty of descriptions in the videos um, and the pictures that you'll see. Um, just a quick overview, really. The board's good. Um, pins are a little bent and the screen keeps popping out. Apparently that's a feature. Some people set it up and then remove the screen. I've just put a little bit of Yoohoo glue, tiny little dab under there to hold that down. I'd like to keep that. Um, I've temporarily mounted my receiver. That's probably not going to stay, but that's uh, what I've got to do my testing with. And also, the only issue we've had so far, setup's gone really smoothly, um, other than the low voltage alarm. We're running four cells. I understand it should be set to about 138, um, but as soon as we set that, um, the alarm's going off. Luckily, I didn't realise when I ordered the KK2 that it came with its own alarm, so I did order a um, 
third party alarm from Hobby King. Plug that in, as you can see, you might be able to see on the screen there, there's four green lights. So um, the battery is good as we thought, and I did have a spare one and tested that. So I need to look into that. Other than that, we've reversed the channels, done a little bit of sub trimming, done the ECU setup, and um, everything seems to be good. So it's late now, so we're not gonna go out and test flight. <laughs> no, we are. Hi guys, um, you've just seen the night flight filmed on uh, Malk's phone, we were a bit eager, it was about half past two in the morning. So uh, day two, I've had a, a little bit of time in between uh, dealing with the family to uh, just change a few things. The props were really, really high before, so I've just gone in there, cut the props down, got the hubs nice and low. Um, so that's all done and had a little bit of time to have a look at the KK board and muck around with a couple of the gains. I had a bit of a hunting issue last night, it seems to have been solved. Uh, by either the gains or what I've done to the shafts. So only a few improvements, but she's flying better already. We've done the first couple of loops, uh, loops and flips. So uh, just a quick demonstration there. So you can see where we're at with it. As you can see, there's a little bit of oscillation, uh, but mucking around with the settings today, I've got rid of most of that. We do want to put some uh, dampening underneath the motor mounts and hopefully that will get rid of some of it. But she seems fairly stable. Still got the um, cheap hot fly props on it. Get a little bit of wash out from them, but you know, they're plenty punchy. Sorry if you didn't get that mount. <laughs> Try again. Three, two, one. Oh, awful landing. <laughs> well, we'll keep you informed. We're going to make some other changes to it. So um, when we do, we'll get back to you. Thanks, guys. I'm Alan signing out for Silly Fockers TV. Cock, cock, cock. Please don't be too hard on him, guys. It's Alan's first time in front of the camera, and I thought he did a really good job. Just to wrap up, here are the actual prices. I've screen grabbed what it would cost you to build this without the extra bits that Alan bought. So here's that. And here's the good version. So you can see how cheap this quad is to build thanks to the fantastic prices at Hobby King. For the record, I'm not a fan of Hobby King at the moment, but one thing they have done is they've brought this sport um, within the reach of people on lower budgets and lower incomes. Um, so for that, I am very grateful to Hobby King.